Hello everyone, welcome to the final episode of the 2.7 tier list. Um, so, we are doing low, mid, and high tyrant, as well as overlord. Uh, so, uh, the game literally just updated this morning, so I was a bit late, I'm sorry. Uh, but, uh, our part 7, instead of doing like a best to worst of each rarity, I'm just gonna, uh, put where I think each creature uh, uh, each of the update's new creatures go. So, yeah. Alright, uh, starting with Low Tyrant, um, there are, there are only Uniques and Apexes in these tiers, by the way. So, first up, we have our Dentist Maxima. So, our Dentist Maxima, uh, is probably on the lower end of Low Tyrant. Uh, kind of mid, mid to low area. So, um, the high health, Reasonable damage, you'll see why that's reasonable. A low speed, high crit chance, really good resistances, though it is hurt by the lack of distract uh, resistance. Uh, so it isn't as reliable for beating Cunnings. I think there's a chance for Ender after to beat this thing, which is surprising to say the least. So, Zillion Strike, really good. Group Starting Rampage, really good. Taunt Shattering Rampage, like a normal Shattering Rampage would be better, but for this thing, it works fine. And some instability taunt, fine. So it can just do 4,800 to two turns, which is really good. And if you get a, it, you're very likely to get a crit, so that gets increased even more. Uh, Maxima is really, really good. Although there are better, uh, the, the other two unique sauropods are better. Um, okay, Compsicallus. Compsicallus, this is a controversial spot. I think this one's a little bit overrated. It is probably the best in low tyrant. I will agree with that. But I don't think it's like a top three unique at all sure it has really good matchups but outside of 1v1s this thing is not really that great um but in 1v1s it does shine i think it beats hadro's lux uh it's a flock creature so this health number is deceiving it's got good good damage high speed uh decel immune which is surprising considering neither of its greetings have anything to do with decel resistance at all uh <laughs> this cutting creature gonna strike is Fine, hop and mocks fine, restricted group distractions fine, alert scurries alert 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 scurries good. Swap and distractions fine. Uh its moveset isn't particularly special, it's just the fact that it's a flock creature it just makes it crazy. And then alert scurry is uh when threatened it lets it regen, which is nice. So yeah. Gomsicolis is really strong. Uh yeah, and there's gonna be two additions to low tyrant in this uh in the in this update and one of them's a legendary uh anyways next is Erlikosphix. so this is what you think of when you think of a high tier cunning unique creature Erlikosphix is awesome it has very high health for a cunning with high damage and high speed so overall high, overall really good stats it's got pretty good resistances these three right here and then the moveset's really nice too mineral seed of psych is Fine. Is it distractions good? Revenge distracting impact good. Precise pounce is good. You can do six thousand to two in two turns on revenge, and then fifty two fifty in two turns without revenge. That's really good, and it's fast. Uh, the only issue is that resilience are meta right now, and um, the and the the tanks kind of destroy it. But anything that's not a tank and isn't faster than this better watch out because this thing's a beast. Alright, Gripalith. Gripalith, like, uh, oh, by the way, Compsicallus and Relicospix are higher than, like, Argentus Maxima and this one, Gripalith. Uh, Gripalith is... Gripalith's really good. Um, it's not as great in an unboosted environment as it is, as it is in a boosted environment. If this was in a boosted environment, then it would be probably mid-Tyrant. Uh, but yeah, this is an unboosted tier list, so alas, we can't do that. So, this is a rending counter attacker, so its damage stat uh, doesn't affect its counter. So, I, you could say this is ridiculous for a counter attacker, but its counter isn't based on your damage, so I wouldn't really say that's ridiculous damage. It's got average damage for a creature overall, with decent health, with armor. Uh, it is the second slowest unique in the game. Um. But I don't really think speed holds it back, considering if in a boosted environment you don't need the speed boost thing at this thing at all, which means that the speed on this creature doesn't matter. Uh, 
Stone resistance is nice. Soft engine resistance is fine. So fear strike. Uh, okay. Immobilize is good. It lets you stall for the heal. The heal is great on a counter attacker. And ferocious defense is what. He, if this thing had like its old long protection instead of ferocious defense, it'd be high elite. Uh, but ferocious defense is what brings this thing to the to tyrant. So, you get a 50% shield and a 50% ferocity buff. That's really good. Because, it's going to make those 25% rending counters go to 37.5%. And, that heal is going to go from healing 1.5 times to healing 2.25 times. So that's really good. Yeah. This thing can sustain itself for a pretty good amount of time, despite... Despite having not that much effective HP at, uh, at face value. And it can dish out damage, just constant damage at the counters. Uh, and it also has no escape, so a lot of things can't swap out against it. That's that's good. Uh, Gryphoth is great. Alright, Quetzorian. Quetzorian is kind of in between uh, the like two like gr tiers of low tyrant. Like you have the lower part, which is maximum... Gryphalith, and then you have the higher part, which is Olympus Picks and Compton Collis. Quetzorian, I would say, is in the middle. I think this thing is extremely underrated. Uh, I, people say this is highly, and I really disagree with them. I like this thing a lot. Um, while it's not as good as it used to be, I completely agree. I still think it's a strong dino. I did overrate it, like, a few, like, uh, when I, uh, made, back when I made Tier List a few months ago. Well, I still make tier list, but uh, but when I made tons of tier lists a few months ago, I did overrate this thing by putting it in like the it, like in uh, like when I did unique rankings, I had this thing in the top five uniques, which now I realize the error of my ways. Uh, but this thing is still good. So high health for a cutting, although it's sometimes hard to consider it a cutting because it's a cutting that dies to four. So this is more of a resilient. Uh, Good damage, though it can't do 4,500 to 2 turns, which can hurt, but I don't think it's that big of an issue. Really fast. I think this is the fastest unique in the game. Uh, and then, really good resistances, too. Gravity Strike is pretty good move. Uh, it's not, like, the best, but it's it's fine. Long Guard's ability is awesome. Long Guard's ability is what makes this thing great. Uh, you just get a hundred automatically turn one hundred percent shield for two turns. That is awesome, and it says three turns, but that's really two turns because of the two attacks. Uh, this that's why this thing beats up cunning so well, and then it really does well against resilience that can't get through that shield, and it usually brings them down to a standstill or it brings them to setup range. Uh, things like Mammalania get bring, brought into setup range by this creature. Uh, Null Rampage does damage and nullifies. That's cool. Sidestep's also really nice. Uh, it's just... It, it's a decent get-off-me move. No counter is really only used for beating, for countering minimal setup psychs that are done by Earl Dom and Elixir Picks. Otherwise, you don't really need it. And then Swap and Dodge is nice. Um, yeah, it's, yeah. It's free swapping. Yeah, uh, Quartolian's good. Anyway, it's time for our two Apexes in this tier. Uh, the first is Mortem Rex. Mortem Rex is probably the weakest of the Apexes. I put it at or slightly below Maximum Gripeless tier. It's probably the, it's probably the weakest of the Low Tyrants. Mortem Rex is still good, though. Uh, if this were a boosted tier list, easy Overlord tier. Uh, this thing is absolutely busted in a boosted environment. Unboosted, not quite so much. But it's still good. Um, 4,500 health. Um... Uh, Sure, a lot of a lot of things that like tanks they supposed to counter can do that much in two turns, but I and but it's still a reasonable amount of health. Uh, it has the highest amount of damage in the game, two thousand damage. That's crazy. And then it is slow, yes, but it's not the slowest thing in the world. This thing's still gonna outspeed things like, well, Thor has priorities. I don't think that really counts. Gripalith, Skuna. This thing absolutely wrecks Skuna. Does it? I think it does. Um, yeah. This thing's really, this thing's, this thing's really good. Um, and then it's got a really high crit chance. 
And then, um, oh yeah, I'll feed Die Roger and Trico. It feeds both of those, and those are two mid tyrants, which is nice. So, resistances. Uh, Diesel immune is what really makes this thing, like, if it didn't have Diesel immune, it would be high elite, possibly even mid elite. Um, but yeah. Bleed, bleed resistance is, I guess, fine. Doesn't really matter. Because uh, until recently, there weren't really any. Tyrant or higher bleeders until this update, which we'll get to in the next video. Stun resistance is cool. Swap engine resistance is cool. No one cares about bone resistance. So this is just a bread and butter fierce move set. Or at least the first three moves are. This is basically defense shattering strike, except it's useful against flocks. Um, it's basically group shattering strike. I don't know why they called it different. Whatever. Fierce set back to fierce rampage. Basic chomper moves. Four thousand on a rampage. Jeez. Cleansing Impact is also what makes this thing awesome. If this thing didn't have a cleanse move, then it would also be high elite. But, this is what lets it deal with Distract. That is great. Uh, just doing 3,000 damage in turn 1 while also cleansing Distract moves is awesome. Uh, it lets it beat a multitude of cunning creatures that would otherwise destroy this. So yeah, Cl uh, Cleansing Impact is really nice on this thing. So, Mortem, it's, it's not, like, great. Uh, for, it's definitely the weakest Apex, but it is still a really good Dino. Refinantum. Uh, I put Refinantum probably at the same spot as Quetzorian in the middle of Blue Tyrant. Um, people, a lot of people are saying this is worse than Mortem Rex, but I disagree. Um, so, base stats. Good health for a Cunning. High damage. Kind of low speed for cunning, but still good speed. Uh, resistances. Eh. 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 Nothing really noteworthy. Okay, moveset. Moveset on this thing is both good and lackluster. Like, both insane and lackluster at the same time. Cunning strike's fine. Alert nullifies, so basically secure, nullify, 50% distract. Same, and then, uh, Threaten the same thing, but 75% distract. It's a good move. Cutting Rampage. Super super Distraction's awesome. Priority. 25% uh, stun chance, which isn't much, but it's still a stun. Uh, wait. Since when did it bleed? Since when did it bleed? What? I don't remember this thing being able to bleed. Oh. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, reduce damage twenty percent for one turn, and then target all opponents. Attack one time. Oh wait. Okay, so it the attacks the open five times is replaced by a bleed. So now it's a strike instead of an impact, uh, but it's fifty percent like uh, well twenty five percent bleed for two turns. Okay, that makes sense. I don't really know whether to say that's better or worse, but I I guess. Uh, yeah. But also, it's it's it's, it's, it's basically it is a distraction because it's fifty percent distracts twice. All right, and then finally, alert counter distraction really not that useful. Um, it's reduced damage by very like small amounts, but I guess it can sometimes work. And then swap and distraction, which is fine. So Refinantum, it's interesting. It's a very wacky move set. Have gone to decent stats and lackluster resistances. I think it's I think it's good. Okay, mid tyrant. Um, also, I I am thinking of moving Compsicallus up to mid tyrant, but I'm not really sure. So, our first mid tyrant is Diarrhagosaur. Diarrhagosaur, I'd put near the top of mid tyrant. Uh, when I first made this list, I had it in high tyrant, but I decided to move it down. Uh, Diarrhagosaur, I think, is underrated. Uh, like really underrated. Diarrhagosaur's good. Uh, it's really tanky. It has very high damage for a counter attacker. And it's it's slow, yeah, but still. And it's got a high crit chance. Uh, if this thing actually had like a good set of resistances, then it would be high tyrant. But it doesn't have resistances, which is unfortunate. And then this move set is just a really good move set for a counter attacker. It has a rampage, and it's a counter attacker of twelve hundred base damage. So you do twenty four hundred on turn one, and then thirty six hundred on turn two. That is. 6,000 damage in two turns. That's great. And then, you also have shields. 
to stall for even more counterattacks. Mixed with that 30% armor. That's a lot. This thing is just going to keep dishing out counters and spamming shields and getting resilient rampages off. And it's the definition of cunning repellent. It does, it does good damage to most fierce creatures, though it will lose. It does get completely shut down by Gripalith. Um, which is unfortunate. And, it, like, it gets completely deleted by Gripalith. But I don't think that brings us down a lot. Especially since Gripalith isn't as relevant unboosted as it is boosted. And a boosted environment is definitely, like, probably low tyrant. Antilalania. Uh, Antilalania is probably on the bottom end of this tier. Um, but it is good. It's really good. Um, so, good health, but with a lot of armor, so it's really a lot of health. Uh, damage doesn't seem that high at first, but I'll explain later why that is an absolutely ridiculous damage number. It is it is the, I think, tied third slowest unique in the game. Uh, and then, d -cell immune is nice, but it's super slow, so I don't think it matters that much. Although it does sometimes matter against Trikos and Diarrhages, but I think it still loses to both of those. So, Persistent Ferocious Strike on 1400 base damage. You can see it's already getting good. Uh, like, Mammotherium's good basically for that reason. Mammotherium's highly. Dig in, so you can heal for 2100 if you want to. Okay, Resilient Impact, so just Mammotherium moveset. Is it gonna have Bellow as its last move? No, it has Devastation! With 1,400 base damage. Why? <laughs> That's what makes this thing so strong. So you literally do Resilient Impact. And then Persistent Virtual Strike. And then Devastation to do so much damage. Or you can do Dig In, Persistent Virtual Strike, Devastation. Or Dig In, Resilient Impact, Devastation. Or any combo. And you're still going to do damage. At least whenever you're not getting shielded against. Uh, shields are its downfall, but I don't think that's enough to make this thing not mid-tyrant. Uh, yeah. That's really good. 4,200 damage just on a Devastation without the Ferocious Boost. With that Ferocious Boost, that's 6,300. Wow. This is basically offensive Testa Cornubus that isn't fast, but it works. And it works better than Testa Cornubus does. Yeah, that's really good. Okay, uh, Magna Pyrrhor. Magna Pyrrhor, I'd probably put kind of mid to high end of this tier. Magna is underrated, very underrated. I love Magna Pyrrhor. Um, its base stats are all, they're all of them except for the health are really good, and the health still is not bad at all. Um, yeah, it, and it has one of the best resistance pools in the entire game. That is an amazing set of resistances. Um, the, um, okay, hold on. Okay. Uh, defense Shattering Strike? Fine. Although it's probably the move that's used the least on this. Null Impact? Pretty good. The Stacking Impact? Great. Fierce Rampage? Really good. The moveset is versatile. The moves—it's not that flashy of a moveset, but it's still good. This is basically just Monolith Metrodon, but better, uh, or at least that was the comparison that was made before Monolith Metrodon got nerfed. Now it's Monolith Metrodon, but much better. So yeah, it's gonna do a pretty good amount of damage. It's gonna take some hits of Distracting Impact, and it's gonna outspeed a lot of things, and it can't be slowed down. So it is vulnerable to swappers. Like if swaps weren't better, then this thing might even be high tyrant. Um, but, yeah. It's, it's a, it's a great unique. Mammalania. Uh, Mammalania is probably better than its Entelalania. Uh, than its, like, quote, I guess you could call it brother Entelalania. Uh, but not, like, much better. I would probably put this thing right in the middle of this tier. So, Mammalania is a rock that does not die at all. <laughs> That's why this thing's really strong. Is because it refuses to die if you don't have shattering abilities. Or bleed. And even then it has way to cleanse. It can cleanse the bleed. So it's really not an issue. 
Yeah, this is Entelania, but much more defensive. 5,100 health with 50% armor. This is easily the tankest... Ta tank... Tankest? What the heck? Easily the tankiest creature in the game. By a wide margin, too. Um... That is... That is 10,200 effective HP, which is absolutely insane. The damage is low, but you can still do 4,500 in two turns with this combo here, which is good. The speed is... Why does why is something that's this tanky have one fifteen speed? That's that that's that confuses me. Resistances, uh, are really good. This is the first strike, really good. Resilient rampage, really good. Dig and taunt, really good. Taunting bellow, no one cares. Um, you are gonna you're just gonna not die. <laughs> that's right. You just don't die when you play as this. It, 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 if you're not against something that can destroy those shields and go through that armor, then you're you're gonna destroy them. It's that simple. Yeah. Mono the Rhino. Oh boy. Um, I am. I am gonna get so many mean comments about people just yelling at me because they want this thing to be high tyrant. I mean, I can see why you'd want it to be High Tyrant. It's a swap or it's up as a meta, but let me explain why it's not quite there. And also, I am kind of conflicted on where to put it in this tier. Like, on one day I might have it in the lower end, and one day I might have it near the, uh, near the top, and currently I'm kind of sitting on it in the middle of this tier with, like, Memlania. Yeah, I don't really know. But this thing is still a beast. Um... 4,500 health is really good with 30% armor. 1250 damage is really good for a swapper. Uh, 116 speed is fine. Really good set of resistances. Like, really good set. Cunning Strike is, I guess, good for dealing with fears. Definite Impact. Definite Impact is really not very good. Like, it does damage, yes. But it has a delay, which is really unfortunate. If it... If it had defense shattering impact, that would be high tyrant. Uh, I would, I would, without a doubt, put high tyrant just because it could follow that swap in by a big hit on turn one. Uh, but yeah, I think that's the sole reason is it can't do a big hit after you swap in. And then the shields are really nice on this thing, especially the priority one because you'll mostly survive enough to get out. But you can't cleanse your swap event, which is unfortunate. If if it hit. If it, if it had, like, there was such thing as cleansing shattering effect, and it was put in this thing, then it'd definitely be high tyrant. it maybe even be the best unique in the game. And then, of course, swap and stunning strike. Like, if swapping stunning, swap and stunning strike removed from this would probably make it, like, mid or high elite. Swap and stunning strike is really what, make this, what makes this thing a tyrant. So, yeah. Um, okay, Trico. Trico is our last unique in this tier. Trico, I probably tie it with Dyrogosaur. A lot. Most people say it's better than Dyrogosaur, but I say they're equal. Um, yeah, this is definitely top of of mid tyrant. Um, it's super powerful. I'm I'm actually getting pretty close to being able to unlock this guy, so that's exciting. Uh, I think it was the first unique to ever exist in this game. Yeah, and it, it has been a roller coaster of balance throughout the history of this game. Although most of the time it's been at the top. So, um, the health may not seem that great, but I think 30% armor makes up for that. Uh, really good damage, really low speed, uh, this may as well be no resistances. Fear Strike, fine. Resilient Impact, Resilient Impact is great. If it had Fierce Impact, this would probably be high elite, I would say, but like very top of high elite. Uh, but it could slow things down, which is why when it could, which is why it's great. When you could pair that with the defense shattering rampage, and just smash through anything. Uh, yeah, that that's really what makes this thing like great is just that resilient impact, and then defense shattering rampage do a bunch of damage. Invincibility taunt. You you don't, I don't see people using this invincibility taunt that often uh, on Trico, but. I guess it can sometimes stall. F well, you don't really need to stall for a cooldown. The cooldowns on this thing are really good. But I guess it just gets an extra counter off. But I don't really think you need it because if you do resilient impact, then it's invincibility taunt. Next turn, the opponent is not going to be slowed down, so they can hit you and possibly kill you before you get that rampage off. 
Lastly, medium counterattack, 800 damage. That's that's nice. It, add, it just adds more damage. That's that. Yeah, Trico is awesome. Okay, the apexes. Uh, Haas Maximus got actually got added for 2.8, so I'm actually going to omit that. Um, just pretend it's not there. Um, it was it was leaked in 2.7 what the stats would be, so that's why I ranked it. But it was added here. I'm gonna wait for the next video to go over that. So our one uh, one apex here from 2.7 is Gorgo Trebax. Um, Gorgo Trebax is great. Uh, really great. I, I like Gorgo Trebax. Um, of, of course, uh, how could I say that? I don't have it. Uh, uh, uh. I mean, I mean, looking at it on paper, it looks great. And from what people tell me, it looks great. So... Uh, it's got the highest health out of any cunning in the game. Uh, yeah, although, I guess the flock creatures do kind of make that different. Uh, really high damage. However, it is extremely slow, uh, which is unfortunate. But it does have a uh, speed-up move to, uh, to bring it... The, I think when it does the speed-up move, it'll bring this up to 124, which is better. Uh, it's got really... It's, uh, it's got really good resistances. Those are great resistances here. Especially the run resistance. Group... Oh, yeah. I forgot it has two speed increase moves. Group Accelerate Cunning Strike is probably one of the, if not the best basic moves in the game. Uh, it does so much. It does the Cunning Strike stuff, and then it does the Minimal Speed Up Strike stuff. That's awesome. And then Cautious Impact. Another extremely powerful move. Increases speed by 10% for one turn. 75% dodge for one turn. Precise Attack I Impact. 50% Distract for... Not one, like Conscious Strike, but two turns. Uh, this would... Uh, also, this thing is probably at the top of Mid-Tyrant with, like, Trico and Dairaja. Um Kind of, actually, probably in between them and, like, Mammalania and Mala right now. Uh, but this would be more on the bottom end and maybe even low Tyrant if, if this didn't have... Uh, if it was a one-turn Distract. And then, Revenge Nullifying Rampage uh, does a lot of damage, and on Revenge... On Revenge, it's completely unblockable because you can't distract this. Uh, and then the Null just goes to that dodge. So the only thing you can do is armor. And there's no such thing as 100% armor. So really unblockable. Then Group Instant Distraction, which is worse than Normal Instant Distraction, but it's still a good move. Yeah. Uh, this thing's got 5600 to 2 turns, which is great. Uh, the cooldowns are pretty good. The damage output's great. The Distraction and dodge is just is just awesome. The resistances are good. The base stats, except the speed, are good. Uh, it's it's just good. Uh, it just dies to tanks. <laughs> Although I think it has a chance to beat Gemini Titan. Um, but outside of that, it generally dies to the to the tanks. Okay. Uh, moving on to high tyrants. So we got three uniques here. Although they will be joined by an apex in two point eight. Um, so, our first High Tyrant is Gemini Titan. Um, so, Gemini, I'm not really going to rank them within the tiers, because I'm really not sure where I rank them within the tiers. Before, I ha I said Gemini over Tanatorax over Skunasaurus. Now, I'm not really sure, um, because... Yeah, uh, Skuna has been outperforming Gemini and my team in the arena by a lot. But that is arena, so I'm still not sure. So Gemini, really high health. Uh, good damage for being, for having two Rampages. Uh, not the slowest tank in the world. And then has really good resistance. It's basically maximum resistance, but better. Because uh, that's distraction resistance. And then an upgraded version of Maxima's move set too, except for group of its ability, which is probably worse than its ability not because the cooldown. So resilient strike, great. Group starting rampage, great. So def definite shield advantage, one of the best moves in the game, uh, because it is a definite rampage, so it's almost unblockable except for distraction and uh, armor. Well, actually no, it goes through armor. Uh, unblockable except for distraction, except you can't distract this thing 100 percent. And it puts up a shield for one turn. That's 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 kind of crazy. Uh, group of its ability is really not that good. So, Gemini. Uh, 5,200 to 2 turns on something that's really tanky. Wow. Um, 
I love Gemini Titan. It is so strong. Okay. Our next one is Scutosaurus, which is the other uh, insanely OP unique tank. So, this one is even more health than Gemini Titan. Not only that, but it has 30% armor. So, I think this is maybe the second or third tankiest creature in the game. Uh, just behind Mammalania and maybe Notopata Titan and maybe also I don't remember Carbon I don't remember Carbon Enemies effective HP and I also don't really remember uh, if Dodecarus is higher than this or not but it is insanely tanky uh, that's just what it is and it's Cunning Resilient which is nice uh, this is the, easily the most viable of the Cunning Resilient creatures so um 1200 damage may not seem that impressive, and it doesn't have the insane multipliers of the other two unique store pods, but we'll see why that doesn't really matter later. It is also the slowest of the three store pods, uh, but again, that doesn't really matter. You don't really need speed on this thing, because uh, you know, I, I don't see people speed boosting this in arena, so I don't really think it matters. So, it's got distraction resistance. It isn't diesel immune, which is unfortunate, but I don't think that really changes anything, seeing how slow it already is. Uh, stun immunity, great. Swamp resistance is nice. Uh, the last two resistances are useless. Resilient strike, great. Group intelligence rampage, great. Invisibility taunt, pretty good. Receptive group distraction. Uh, I said it was fine on Refernantum. On this, no, that wasn't a Refernantum. That was Cops of Calls. I said it's fine, it comes to cause, but on this, Restrictor Group Distraction is amazing. Because, guess what counters tanks? Fierce creatures, tanks, or no, no, uh, like chompers. And guess what counters chompers? Distracting moves. That's what makes this thing awesome. Is the fact that it has a distracting impact. Uh, essentially, distracting impact. Yeah. And then it has a medium resilient counterattack, 600 damage on a counter, which basically makes up for the lost damage um, from you know, compared to the other two sword pods. Ugh, it's so good. It's got 5,402 turns with the counters, uh, which is still a lot of damage. In fact, that's more than Maximus damage output. Uh, yeah, this thing is it's so insane. Uh, I love this dino a lot. I use it on my arena team. It doesn't even have that many boosts on it. It's already already outperforming most of my team. Uh, it's so, so strong. Anyways. Uh, Tenontorax is our last high tyrant. Tenontorax is awesome. Uh, I, this, I have, I have more, I have more boosts on this creature than anything else. Uh, and... It is so versatile, does so much damage, has decent survivability, uh, can slow things down uh, so that this, the, it being slow is, doesn't hurt it too much, and it is just overall amazing. So, it's got good health, insane damage, low, low speed, uh, stone resistance is great, although the resistance set overall isn't too flashy and impressive. Resilient Strike. Already getting Resilient Strike on a Chomper. Uh, when you see Resilient Strike on a Chomper, you know it's getting really, really good. Monster Group Heal is probably the weakest move on this thing, but it's it's still a, it still works, um, especially with the high base damage. You can use it to outplay quite a few creatures. In fact, I think that's the way this thing can beat Magna is through using that heal. Defense Shouting Rampage. Uh, that's a lot of damage. That's, uh, that's all I'm going to say about Defense Shouting Rampage in this thing. Then Distracting Impact, that's also a lot of damage, plus a distraction on a chopper. A creature type that's supposed to be completely fierce with no, none of these special status effects. Then, But then you put slow and distract on it. This thing is so versatile. Uh, I love it so much. Uh, this, this creature is so fun to use in Arena. Uh, it is my MVP of my team. Uh, probably because I have so many boosts on it. If I put that many boosts on Skinosaurus, then I don't know. You can just wombo combo with this thing. <laughs> There's so much damage in these first two turns at the impact and the rampage. Like, how much is that? That's over That's over 6,000, almost 7,000 damage 
in two turns. That's that's just insane. Dynorex is awesome. All right, time for the Overlord Dinos, the two apex creatures here. Oh boy. Uh, so first, Sarah Magnus. Uh, Sarah Magnus is the best creature in the game, no questions asked. Um, I don't think anyone denies that this is the strongest creature in the game. This is absolutely busted. So, it's got the same effective HP as Mono Rhino, but 1500 base damage. It's got Woolly Rhino, it's got this is the Woolly Rhino thing where it has insane base damage to swap in Stunning Strike. Yeah, and then it's not the slowest thing in the world. The base speed is not that bad. And then, technically, its effective speed is absolutely insane. Uh, which we'll get to that later. It's D cell immune and stun immune, which is good. Now, the move set. Resilient Strike, awesome. Group Acceleration is so insane. Like, it's the reason Tour Moloch's not low elite. Uh, group Acceleration is one of the reasons why this thing's uh, Overlord. Why it's the best creature in the game. Oh my gosh, it hurts my head to even think about, like, the reason Ludia would put that move on such a strong dino. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's it's OP. Th this creature is genuinely OP. And then a Q stun, which isn't very good, but you don't really need it. <laughs> you don't need it for Dracoceratops. Of course, you're not going to need it for Sarah Magnus. And a Precise Rampage, just... Right off the bat, after you swap in, if you want to, just do 3,000 damage. Uh, just do 3,000 damage like it's nothing after doing 1,500 and stunning them. And then, on turn 3, you can hit with a priority 1,500 for even more. And then you're going to be faster than whatever they have, so you can do another 3,000 and probably get the kill. This thing is so ridiculous. <laughs> and then you get the swap in stunning strike. Which is the best swap in ability in the game. With 1,500 base damage. I already explained why that's OP in Wooly Rhino, so... Uh, like in the High Elite video, so yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, it's so overpowered. Okay. Anyways, time for our last creature of this... Uh, of this 2.7 tier list series. Hadros Lux. Uh, this is almost as strong as Sarah Magnus, but not quite. Uh, this is definitely lower in Overlord tier than Sarah Magnus, but I still think it deserves this, thing, uh, this tier through and through. So, really high health, really high damage, low speed, really good resistances, and then an absolutely insane moveset. Resilient Strike, great. Rampage, great. Great Emergency Heal, great. Uh, resilient Rampage, great. Medium Resilient Counter, great. You can do just 6,000. Cycle Rampage, Cycle Rampage, 6,000 in two turns. With, but, that's technically 7,500 in two turns because of the freaking counter attack. If it, if it didn't have the counterattack, it'd probably be High Tyrant. It'd still be insane. But the counterattack is what makes this thing Overlord tier. Um, uh, I think without the counterattack, it would lose to Alaraptor. Uh, there's probably a few other things it'd lose to. But because of the counterattack, this thing has the best matchup spread in the entire game. Uh, this thing is the king of 1v1s. Great Emergency Heal. Oh yeah, just... Why not he, Why not let this thing be able to heal half its health with priority and then cleanse? Uh, just every uh, every three turns. Like, just... Ugh. It is so overpowered. Uh, both these creatures. Both of them are, both of them are insane. Uh, I don't know why Ludia thought it would be a good idea to make anything this OP. Uh, these are... These are... These are... The, this is... This is the level that the crazy 1.14 dinos had. Uh, this, this isn't supposed to be a post 2.0 uh, era type, like, post 2.0, there aren't supposed to be things that are this OP. Oh, wait, I forgot about Argentus Maxima 2.0, and then Hadrosox and Sarah Magnus from that point onwards. Yeah. I guess 2.0 isn't balanced at all either. Anyways. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed. That was this is a long series. I've been late to most of these episodes. This should this series should have ended a week ago. Uh, but I I hope you like the series. Uh, most of you probably hate my tier list anyways. But I hope you I, I hope I'm at least have some decent like jokes. I guess. Uh, yeah. I'll I'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, part seven will be detailing the new 2.8 creatures and where I think they fit on this tier list. And, uh, yeah. I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.